WWE 24 special on The Miz was fantastic. It was a really good documentary. One of the big things coming out of it is something that Miz kind of disclosed publicly, I guess. And it's kind of amazing that it was on the WWE Network that this was admitted. But uh, The Miz had talked about being kicked out of the locker room one day. Now, apparently this was done by Chris Benoit. So he ended up saying on the documentary, uh, or he ended up saying, one day I was eating a piece of chicken in the locker room. Someone comes in and goes, dude, you're eating over my bag. And his bag was right there. I was like, oh, no, no, no. And he was like, dude, you just got your stuff all over my bag. I still don't think I got stuff in his bag, but I was saying, I'm sorry, I apologize. Another person walked in, oh, you got stuff on his bag. How could you do that? Unbelievable. And I thought they were joking. It was almost like I was just taking the chicken and throwing it in the locker room and smearing it all over the place and all over stuff. That's what I felt like. And I'm appalled. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to do it. I'm just trying to do the right thing here. And he goes, you're not allowed to dress in our locker room. I think you should just stay at the locker room. Obviously, we could have known this story before anyway. But like, when you see it on a WWE Network documentary, it's kind of disgusting that, you know, this sort of level of unprofessionalism by by someone is allowed to happen for so long for like six months or whatever it was that this is allowed to go on i mean it's kind of astonishing that wb would allow this to go out because it does not paint them in the best light as a company that one of their talent is made to go and change in toilets and things like that for months for really not any real reason i mean you must remember this story i guess from when it actually happened Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, people were congratulating Chris Benoit at the time. I mean, Miz was demonized. I mean, this was the guy that was, you know, formerly from the real world. Um, JBL used to mock him week in and week out on commentary, he referred to him as it was the Kardashian brother. Uh, wasn't there like references, you know, comparisons made between him and was it Ryan Seacrest from the E channel? Vincent Mann said to Miz that he sees him, he sees Miz as WWE's answer to Ryan Seacrest, which Miz goes on to say that he was hoping that Vince would see him as the guy and as, you know, maybe the, the next champion, but instead it was the next Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, Miz was basically treated like a joke for years backstage. He... He was, I mean, do you remember? I'm sure you remember this, Kenny. Remember when NXT started? Uh, Daniel Bryan was the rookie and Miz was his pro, even though yeah. Daniel Bryan had many more years experience in the business than the Miz did at that point. And like Miz was basically, this, this would have been 2010, wouldn't it? So it was- Yeah, before, 2010. I think it was February of 2010 that started. Um, yeah. So this was before Miz won money in the bank and it was obviously was before he cashed in and defeated Randy Orton later that year to become WWE champ. So a lot of people just did not rate Miz. They didn't take him seriously. They didn't feel like he'd um, paid his dues and done, and done all the things that wrestlers were supposed to do back in the day. But yeah, I remember the story when this happened with Benoit. He was the one that basically threw him out of the locker room. Uh, and people were saying that Benoit did the right thing and Miz didn't deserve to be there and hadn't earned it and hadn't suffered enough. Um, and it was, you know, people were, were laughing about it. You know, Benoit was this big hero for humbling and humiliating the Miz in this fashion and bullying him like this. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, in, in what a lot of people who covered pro wrestling at the time, felt that Benoit was justified in his actions at that time. And I think if you were to take a poll of people in wrestling at that time, um, I think most people would have said, yeah, Benoit did the right thing. You know, what was Miz doing? I believe the, the bag belonged to a referee. I think that's correct. As, I think that's the story. Um, it yeah, just seemed like, so. a, it just seemed to me like an excuse to belittle and bully the guy, which is precisely what it was. Um, I mean, I was a big fan of The Miz. You know, I, I absolutely got behind The Miz in 2010. Uh, I had him on uh, two consecutive covers of Power Slam, which I don't think I'd, I had ever done before. I don't even think John Cena made two consecutive covers of Power Slam. Well, magazine. I'll hold on my shot Everyone there. knows what a, what a fan of Cena that I was. I know Miz was, <laughs> you know... <laughs> I mean, Miz was that god. If only Power Slam was going today, I could put the Young Bucks on two consecutive covers. What a thrill that would be! So yeah, I had Miz on the cover uh, when he won Money in the Bank, and then I had him on the cover the following issue. I think these were issues one nine four, one nine five, if memory serves me correctly. 
uh, and I did a feature called Is the Miz Ready? And I've got to say, Ernie Santilli, got to give him credit. That was uh, that, the name of that article was his idea. Uh, he suggested that article uh, and I wrote it. And it was all about, obviously, Is the Miz Ready to become WWE Champion? Because uh, he just won the Money in the Bank briefcase. And Batman, mm -hmm. of course, if you won Money in the Bank, you generally cashed in and won the title. Um, and, you know, Miz was making great strides in summer 2010. And he won a lot of people over uh, with his hard work and his improvement in the ring and for representing the company um, so professionally outside the ring. 